Hello, welcome back, what's up? Um, it's been a good couple of years since I did my last SFM tutorial, so I thought it'd be a good idea to update it, since it's been so many years and I've learnt so much since then. So, this is just going to be a nice, quick overview tutorial on most of the stuff, and I'm going to have, in the future, more detailed single commentaries on really specific skills, but this should hopefully just be a tutorial that you could pick up, follow from start to finish, mostly, and make your own uh, SFM poster without too much effort. So with that said, let's get started. Um, normally I would have this on two monitors, by the way, so I've had to squish everything onto one for the sake of this being a recording, so I do apologise that everything's going to be a little bit small, but uh, we're going to have to work with that for today. If you do have two monitors for SFM, it makes such a huge difference, because it means that these uh, these windows can be a lot bigger. Anyway, we're going to start new session, we're just going to call it tutorial, and just save it wherever, it does not matter. So, once it says no map loaded, once you've created your session, click inside of the primary or the secondary viewport, inside this black section, right click, load map. And we're just going to play a nice simple one, let's just load in Badwater. And you see all these various ones I've got downloaded, don't worry about that, if you want to download custom stuff for SFM, it's really easy, you can just drag and drop stuff into the folders, or you can download it off the workshop. So you just give that, you know, Give that a couple of seconds to load in, might take a couple of minutes, depends on your machine. If you hold down control and then press F1, F2, F3, F4, it comes through different versions of the Source Filmmaker layout. So if you ever get lost and confused as to why things look like what, um, just hold down control and press F2 or F1. F1 should be the default, so you see it's gone onto my second monitor there. We're going to go back, we're going to use this version of the layout, so we've got a primary viewport and a secondary viewport. We're going to have our work camera on the second viewport, which we can move around as much as we like, and we're going to have a our primary camera on our left viewport. So what we're going to want to do is go down here, where it says work camera, click on the little arrow next to it, change scene camera, new camera. So this is now camera 1 and this is viewport, they are completely separate. This camera 1 is what the render is going to look like, um, what this render is going to look like, sorry, and this work camera lets us look around the scene without having to mess around with the viewport, if that makes sense. So what we want to do just initially for this tutorial is just find a nice little spot to do our scene in. If you want to move the camera around, get your cursor inside the viewport, hold down left click, hold it down, don't just press it, hold it down, and use the arrow keys to move around as if you would in game. If you want to move fast, hold down shift, if you want to move slow, hold down control. So you've got quite a lot of movement options there between the WAS keys, shift and control. So we're just going to be nice and simple and just pop one over here. And if you want to zoom in and zoom out the FOV, hold down left click, scroll up to zoom the FOV out, scroll down to zoom the FOV in. It's ideal for your tu um, for your posters to have the FOV on fairly low like this. This is a good this is a good idea of an FOV. A bad FOV would be zoomed out like this. This looks really really stupid. So always try to zoom it in a fair old amount like this. Now what we want to do is just get the work camera somewhere we can actually see what we're doing. So the next really important thing to do is right click inside the camera, go on to draw game entities, and you see how not all of these are ticked, including particles and other entities. We want to click on those, therefore enabling loads of stuff on the map. So, for example, by default, the cart isn't even rendered in. If we were to right-click, enable other entities, the cart suddenly loads in, and this includes health packs and stuff. So if you were doing a poster and you are wondering why all this stuff wasn't appearing, or why there were no shutters on the doors, you need to do this, okay? You just need to enable all of this stuff. Players and NPCs don't need to worry about that, and you don't need to worry about anything else. The next thing we're going to do, just to make this a lot easier, is right-click, render settings, and we're going to want to disable motion blur, and where it says depth of field, we're going to change that from use camera settings to, because it's a poster, we can use either 512 or 1040, uh, 1042. So what this means is when it comes to rendering, when we're going to use depth of field and, and um, aperture and all that stuff, this is the number of passes it does. So eight passes looks kind of crap. Like, um, it, instead of a blur, it just looks like the, <laughs> the looks like, literally just looks like the image has been repeated eight times. Whereas if we were to use 512, which is what I normally use, it looks like the image has been repeated 512 times, which is not visible, therefore it looks like a nice blur. And if you're having frame rate issues while doing all of this, simply right-click and disable progressive refinement. And that should hopefully give you a nice bit of FPS while you're working in SFM. Just make sure to re-enable it before you do anything. And you can also disable lighting too, if you're having issues with lighting. And then you can like Photoshop it in or something like that. Sometimes when you're loading custom maps, the lighting looks awful. 
and if I want to make a poster in that, instead of spending forever trying to fix the map, I'll just disable lighting and then Photoshop it in later. But we're going to want to use lighting for this. The default bad water should work fine. Okay, so we'll need to decide what we want to do our poster on. I've decided to keep it nice and simple. I'll just do a scout with a couple of hats, holding a scattergun and doing a running animation. So very important. I want you to direct your attention down to the timeline on the bottom left. There's three options here. The clip editor is used to see what your poster will look like before you render it. The middle one is to be used while you're making adjustments and just you basically use the middle one all the time and only switch to this at the end to see what your post will look like so if you're having issues like you can't move models around or there's you know the options aren't appearing to move stuff middle thing it looks a bit like a plaster so just kind of remember that and if this bit down here disappears this is also used for animating so just don't worry about anything related to animation just make sure this is always selecting all of it if you ever accidentally squish it like that just press ctrl a to select everything okay so what we want to do is is load in a scout so we go into the animation set editor big old section here right click create animation set for new model and we're going to want to type in hwm and then scout there's two different models for lots of things in this game. The HWM is the super high def version, whereas the regular just scout.model is the one that's used in game, I believe. There we go. This is the scout that's used in game, just regular scout.mdl. We don't want to use that. We want to use HWM. So when you're using any classes or any models that have a HWM version, please use it. It has so many more things you can do and it's made for SFM, so the facials, uh, the, the face has been completely rigged up for lip syncing and expressions, it's really easy to add hats and everything, so it's just always, always go with the HWM version. Okay, so we want to just select that and press open or double click, and it should load in instantly. Here we go. So this will show you an example of how the work camera is different to the camera one. Um, I can use the work camera to move the scout around without having to move around the main camera, so we'll want to move the scout, so we select it in the animation set editor, oof, and you'll see he's got these nice little options that are appearing. So I want to draw your attention down to the bottom left of the viewport here. We're going to be wanting to use these two middle options. The left one allows you to move this, the, the scout around in X, Y, and Z axes, you know, up, down, left, right, and depth. And this one here lets you rotate it, either fixed around a point, like this, by selecting one of the lines, or in free movement if you just click anywhere else, so you can do all that. Let's make it look like he's looking in that direction over there. Maybe he's seen a sniper to shoot or something. So just select that and rotate him like that. And we can also go to our camera viewport over here and move it around to face the scout a little bit nicer. How about that? I'd say that looks better. Oh, if you want to move the camera up or down, hold down left click and press Z or X. So, because we're using HWM models, we can literally just add hats straight to the model, so right click, and Team Fortress item. Let's give him the Hermes. So you type in Hermes, click on there, and click OK. You can't double click, you have to press OK. So you'll notice it's clipping horribly, this is because it's still drawing the original hat. To remove that, we'll go back to Scout, right click, set body groups, hat, and none. You see what this does here, is it selects the hat body group and just disables it. We can also do this with the headphones. Oof. We're also going to want to give him a backpack, so let's add in the Dillinger's duffel. Let's give him a nice fur of flip-flops, so I can show you how to remove the feet. So you see, it looks a bit awful and clippy. All you want to do is right-click on Scout, set body groups, choose socks, and remove that. There we go. That's exactly what the Scout always looks like. And in addition, because we're using HWM, we're going to give him a scattergun, so right-click, add TF2 item and scattergun. If we want to, we can use all the skins and stuff. We're just going to go with a stock, and I'm going to make it Australian. So you see it clips all automatically to his right hand. That's because we added it through this menu. If I wanted to add in a model customly, which I will show off later, none of it will clip to the scout. So this is why we're using this HWM models and add Team Fortress 2 item, is because it automatically attaches everything as it should be. So in order to make it look Australian, we're going to right click on it in the animation set editor, set skin, Mess around with these in your own free time, they all do different things, most of them don't do anything, but 8 and 9 I believe are Australian, so we're just going to pick 8. And there we go, nice shiny Australian model, looks very pretty. So to keep this um, tutorial nice, short and concise, I'm going to use a default pose, I'll go over custom posing in the future, as well as painting. This video will not feature painting, as I want to keep it nice, short and something you can just use immediately. We're going to right click on the scout, import, sequence, and then we're going to want to look down for run and primary. You see? To make him look like he's moving forwards, simply select move X, whack that all the way to the right, and it looks like he's running at full speed. If you want him to move to the side, you can mess around with move Y, but we're not going to bother with that, so just set that to move Y. You can also make him look up, down, left, right, 
mess around with it at your heart's content. Today we're just going to have him move straight forwards and actually, you know what? We can have him we can have him tilt a little bit to the side, a little bit towards the camera, stick his head up. There we go, he knows what he's doing. And if we wanted to, we can also add in additional animations on the top of this. So these other menus down here for other animations. So we're going to try and potentially even put on a reload animation, which should be primary reload loop. So we're going to select that and bump this meter all the way to the right. And he'll just perpetually re-reloading his scattergun. So if you want to add in other animations at a slight amount, you can add it in this window. For example, flinch. And then just slide it up, and you'll see he's starting to flinch a little bit. This is cool if you want to layer up animations, but we're just going to be reloading him right now. So just press OK, and you'll see he's updated. If we want to move around, we can move up and down the timeline to get in a different, uh, different frame. You can press up to jump straight to the start, down to jump straight to the end, and left and right to move individual frames. So we're going to want to just go all the way back to the start, and just let's pick a nice animation frame. I'm also going to move the camera around a little bit more, just to get a nice... Oh, that's a really nice position. Look at that. I like that. So, just frame 1 looks like it will do us for rounds, but I'll, I'll flick through the rest of the frames of the animation to see what might fit as better. Yeah, I think frame 4 looks pretty solid, so I'm going to move around the camera a little bit more just to see if I can get a better position for him. In fact, I actually think I might move the entire scout around, so I'm going to go into my work camera, zoom out, grab the scout, press this movement option, and just shove him up into the sunlight, I think. That'll be a nice, a nice better place for him to sit. Remember a rule of thirds while you're placing the camera, by the way. I'm not going to go over to it in too much detail, but the kind of name speaks for itself. You don't want him in the center most of the time. Um, you tend to have to want them kind of on the side, in the side thirds. And ideally you want his eyes to be about two thirds up. It's something to do with like the golden ratio and what makes stuff look pretty to human beings. But something roughly like this, which shows most of his body. Zoom in and out. It's better to have a, a low FOV, as I said, so... It looks a little bit more crushed. As if I zoom out, you'll see this looks very, very poor. This is zoomed out. So zoom it in like this. You can fiddle around with this for absolutely hours, but for the sake of this tutorial, I think I'm just going to pick somewhere and just go with it. Rule of thirds, have him in the left-hand side of the picture. I think that'll look solid for now. So next what we want to do is, because that's roughly why our model's going to look like where he's going to be, also on frame 4, if you if this number changes, just keep clicking on it until you go back to frames, by the way. We're going to want to add in some lighting. I'm going to go into more depth about three-point lighting in a specific tutorial on that, but for the sake of this commentary, I'm just going to add in three lights and quickly show you roughly where I'll want them. So, going to just using the eye point here, the little eye icon, I'm going to disable the bottom two. So this is going to be our first light, it's going to be trying to make the scalp look like he's standing out a bit, so it's our main light. You typically want to have no lights directly in line with the camera, so I'm going to have him around the scout's torso, I think. So aiming from here with the light, you select it in the left, you move it around, and then we're going to grab the rotation tool. If you lose the light ever, just set horizontal FOV to massive and try and move it around until it aims at the floor, and you'll be able to find it. And then you can set the horizontal FOV down a bit. You see on the left here, this lets you mess around with the lights in all sorts of different ways, but... We're going to just have a nice main light, and we're going to have it f try to highlight most of his body. That'll do for now. We don't want it to be that bright, obviously, so we're going to set the intensity down to about... That'll look nice enough for now. Okay, you see it's making his hand shine a little bit too much, so I'm actually going to point it up towards his face a little bit more. We want to show all the details, so... No light, and then... So I think this rough level of intensity works for us. I don't like using the stock white. And almost never want to use stock white, so you tend to either go for like an orange or a blue, depending on the scene. Blue means a bit more cool evening colours, orange means a nice warm kind of morning colours. So, because this is bad water, it's kind of set in a nice warm, I'm going to say morning atmosphere, that's what bad water's always felt to me. So I'm going to go down here in the little menu and set the blue all the way down, and the green down, and just mess around with it a little bit. Try to make a nice... Light orange light is what we're going to go for. That'll do. Just a little bit less on the green and the blue makes it look just a little bit nicer. If we, if you want to see what the light looks like just directly, set the intensity to max, and you can see it's now a nice, slightly warmer than just stock white light. So just controls there to get us back. So we're also going to want to go onto our light 2. Let's enable that. And we're going to want to have this highlight his left-hand side here. So you see his back is completely unlit. You notice by the first light, back is completely unlit, so we'll want to move this around here. Have this a little bit higher than the scout, and facing down, like so. I've lost the light, we're going to enable it. And there we go. We're going to want to set the... Excuse me. We're going to want to set the horizontal up 
just a tiny bit to cover all of the scout. And this one's going to be a lot brighter than the other light, because it's meant to be a nice highlight, but we don't want it to be so bright that it just drowns out all the detail. So just something like this. Something to make his shoulder glow a little bit. Make it look like the sun coming from the top left. In a lot of artwork, um, a lot, the sunlight tends to come from the top left, so you want to blend it in in such a way that it doesn't create this ribboning. You see how his arm here, left bright on the left, but also bright on the right? We don't want that. We're going to be messing around with the light a little bit more in the future, but for now, set it to something like that, highlight like that, and we're going to set this also to a nice orangey colour. Something like that will do us for today, I think. And the final light I'm going to put on his other side. See? Three-point lighting. Again, if, I'm going to go into more detail in a specific video on that, but for now, we're going to have a main light, a top-left light, and then a right-hand light. This will also be in line with the scout, and we're just going to have this facing him from this angle, which is unlit. You see? Second light lights his opposite side. His first light only lights this hand side. So this, this side here is completely unlit, so we're just going to point this nice light three at him. Well, we've lost our light, so try to face it at the floor. There we go. Face that at the scout. Set the horizontal FOV up just a tad. And we just want to highlight his right hand side here. This intensity is going to be roughly the same as the first one, or at least what it looks like from this angle. They don't have to be identical, but just what it looks like from a first view, we're going to want this to be. Actually, oh god, my intensity meter's gone off the left. <laughs> we're just going to want to set this to be not a visible light, but one that deletes the shadows. So, like this, it looks really, really dark on his right hand side. We want to make it look like it's naturally lit from the side, and also set that to a nice orange, I believe. Something along those lines will do. So, that's the rough lighting setup. We've got one light in line with him about here. We've got one light on his shoulder, looking down on him. And we've got a third light aiming at him from the side. That'll do for now. I'll go into more detail in the future as to why that works. But as you can see, if we disable the lights... Looks kind of crap. If we re-enable the lights one at a time, they each add something. Take away one light and it takes away something from the scene. Three lights seems to be the perfect amount to make it look pretty good. So you see, each of the highlights does something quite nice. And one thing I also like to do is disable bloom. So in order to do that, we're going to have to make the camera into its own animation set. So go onto the camera one on the middle here, click on the arrow, and we want to create animation set, and you'll see it appear on the left here. And this lets us mess around with the camera quite a bit. So one thing I always do, Every single time, please disable Bloom. Do not use Bloom in your photos. If you do, use a tiny, tiny amount. The number of photos I've seen on posters that have Bloom set on super high, it's incredibly tacky. It's really hard to do well. If you want to add Bloom, I'd recommend trying to Photoshop it in manually, or again, trying to use it in incredibly sparing amounts. I personally, though, think that posters always look best with Bloom just set off. So just grab the Bloom all the way to the left. So we're also going to want to mess around a little bit with the SSAO. I'm not going to go into a immense amount of detail because there's a lot you can. But in general, this messes around with these black sections, which is where the game is going to kind of add in its own shading based on the lights. With the SSAO bias, the rough idea of it is left, everything is a shadow, right, nothing is a shadow. That's the basic idea. So you want to tend to have this a little bit further to the right because not everything needs to be darker. Strength, it's quite obvious, you know, it's the, the amount of shading that's done. So you don't want to have it all the way on the right, that looks incredibly tacky. All the way on the left looks awful as well. So I typically tend to think about a quarter of the way is about all you need. And the radius is, again, quite difficult to explain, but it's how far out from the shadow it considers shading. All the way on the left, it'll only do the very, very shadowy bits. All the way on the right, it'll shade basically everything. So you want to come to a happy medium where it's Shading the dark sections, but not much else, so that's looking quite solid. I'm actually thinking this might be one of the rare photos that'll actually look better with a tiny bit of bloom. Not something I intend to say, but it seems to make it just pop out a tiny bit, so again, ever so small amount of bloom we're going to be going with. Something like that will do us, I think. The next thing I want to mess around with quickly is the aperture. So this is the stuff where it blurs the distance and keeps the forward looking nice. If you're using SSAO, always use aperture because you might be rendering a poster and wondering, oh, why is this stuff covered in black? If you use aperture, it will remove this. It will blur out these little black sections. So what we want to do is make the scout the focus of please don't blur me. So we're going to get the work camera and just place it here so it makes a bit more sense for us. Um, I'll show you why in a second. So grab the camera on the left, find focal distance, and you see why I've moved the work camera. We can physically see where it's going to blur around. 
So we're going to want to set this roughly through the scout. I like to not blur their faces, so if you're wondering where on a model to not blur, try to set it roughly down the dead centre of his face like this. So this should keep the exact section, if you look on the right there, this section here will be the least amount blurred, and then the further away that you go, the more blur. So we're going to want to set the aperture up a tiny amount. You can set this all the way to full whack and it will blur the crap out of everything, and you can set it to zero and it won't blow anything. This is where we're going to want to use the clip editor on the bottom left, so move to the clip editor, and you'll see, no aperture, pretty much nothing is blurred, but it has fixed the dotty issue. If we just quickly go back to the motion editor and set the aperture up to full whack, you'll see, blurs absolutely everything, which we don't want, this looks very tacky. So we're just going to want to use, I tend to think about anywhere between about a quarter and two thirds, in this range tends to be quite usable. So I'm going to just mess around with a little bit and try and find a good medium. I think that'll do us for today actually, about a third of the way up on the aperture. Although you can just keep messing around with this for a really long time. Do not overuse it, please. One thing I've noticed with this really specific poster is that it's quite hard to make out the detail on his head because there's almost no darkness behind it, whereas there's a lot of darkness behind his body. So what I'm going to try and do, purely to show off um, how to do it, is select everything in the scene, including the camera angle that we've got, and try and move around and find a nicer looking place. Because remember, it doesn't matter what the work camera looks like, he could be halfway through the floor, as long as the camera one looks nice. So I'm going to show this, because I think it's quite a cool trick. We're going to click on the scout, hold down shift, click on other stuff, and this moves the lights, the camera, and everything. Make sure that we're in the motion editor. And we're literally just going to rotate it around, and see if we can find a place that looks slightly better. As you can see, it looks absolutely ridiculous in the work editor, but we can literally move the scout, all his lights, and the camera angle around the entire map, and we can try and find somewhere that looks a bit better for him. Remembering that the lights are around, so you don't want to make it so the lights are stuck in the floor, but we can literally just screw around with this for a long, long, long time. We can have him high in the air, like that, or we can move him all the way to the last point if we want. We're not going to do that. You see, it's actually, the map itself has a light, so you see he's facing towards the sun here with his face, and over here he's not facing towards the sun, so we're just gonna try and find him a nice little place to live. Again, this is just kind of showing off how you can move around, like if you've decided you've made a really nice setup, but you don't like the location, you can move it around incredibly easily just like this, just by selecting everything at once. If you ask someone, hey, what map do you think this is set in, they probably couldn't tell you, this is still bad water, this is just the skybox. But because we're in the skybox, stuff is a little bit brighter, so we're gonna want to just quickly go into the lights, set everything down just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit of a set down. Like three, just like so. I also quite like to set the shadow filter size up quite a bit because it kind of stops these big blocky shadows. You don't have to do this. Mess around with the lights a lot. It's something you can really just screw around with for a really long time. But seem to setting the shadow filter size up quite a bit seems to make him light a lot nicer. So we go back to this clip editor to see how this is going to render. Looking quite solid, I'd say. A bit dark, or a bit bright, but that's perfectly fine because we can fix all of this in post. As long as this looks generally quite nice, we're fine. I've also noticed his eyes are looking a little bit funky, so we're going to go into the scout, and we're going to just press eyes right, left, and we can move them around quite easily. There is an eye, I think this, yeah, the view target specifically that we can move, like so. Um, just kind of use whichever one you think works for you. I'm going to have him looking behind him a little bit, and I'm going to give him a kind of shocked look on his face. So we select the scout again, and we're going to go to the emotion tab, and this just kind of has a lot of nice default emotes that you can use for the sake of this video. So, happy, small, oh god, look, he's got a nice little awkward smile. <laughs> now you can make him angry, now you can make him silence, nothing going on, pain big. Yeah, that's good. You just mess around with this for a really long time. You can specifically set the different parts of his face, so you can make him smile a bit. Give him, if you want to only move one side of his mouth or one side of his body with these things, change this little meter here all the way to the side. So this will only move this side of his mouth. This will only move this side of his mouth. Quite a useful little tip. But I'll go more into detail on facial movements in the future. For now, I think we're just going to make him look like he's a big old happy scout. Look at that, he's, he's having a good old time. And you can also go into phonium. Phonium? Phoneme? You can go to this and make it like he's saying a specific, like, vowel. This is used for lip-syncing, really. But if you want, you want to make him look like he's saying... Ooh. Like this. Ooh. That's, that's the kind of mouth shape, apparently, he would do, according to the people at Valve that created this, so... It works for you. You can mess around with this for an incredibly long time. I'm not going to. I'm just going to make him look like he's incredibly happy. He's like, I'll look at my scattergun. In fact, I actually think that'll work, so I'm going to make it like he's looking at his scattergun. So in the work viewer, I'm going to hold down control to show up all of these clips, and I'm going to find the scout's neck, 
I think that's his neck. Is that his neck or his hat? That's his neck. I'm just going to make him look a little bit at his... Actually, I'm going to select his head. Let's select his head. Boop. And if you, by the way, if you accidentally select the scout's hats on the left here, you see this little arrow. Selectability. We wanted to select the arrows on all of his hats to be turned off, so I can't accidentally select his hats. So I'm just going to make him... Make him look really happy at his... Oh god, he's still selecting the hats. Oh, it's this one. Here we go. So I'm just going to make him look down at his scattergun like he's really pleased that he's got it. He's like, oh, look at my scattergun. Where's his eyes? Where's your view target? Hold down control. View target. It's behind him. We're going to make his view target his scattergun. Oh, he's looking. He's loved it. Oh god, he's so pleased. <laughs> I like this. He looks really pleased with his scattergun, isn't he? And we can move around the camera again. Select the camera. Move around the viewport. And just make him look like he's having a good old time with his little scattergun. Oh, look at him. I really like that. This makes me quite cheerful. We can, you know, just... We, I can genuinely just sit here and mess around with this for hours. <laughs> I'm not going to do that, because I want to... <laughs> I can't get over how happy he looks. He's so he's so cheerful. He, oh. Anyway. That's the majority. This poster is fine as is. I can spend so long messing around with so many more things, and I'll go into detail of those things in the future. But for now, this will do for the stock poster. So I'm going to select the clip editor to double check. Because I moved the scout around a bit, I'm actually going to double check that the focal distance is still on him. So just move that back into his face. Maybe set the aperture up a bit, because the only thing in the distance is really far away. So aperture up quite a bit more. There you go. I think that will do for today. So we're going to want to render this now, and it should render what's in the camera and not the work camera. You see, we can move around this all we like. This is not remotely tied to the scene. So it's a very useful little tool to use. Anyway, we're going to want to render this now. Well, I like to render stuff always as a movie. So press Control m and it will bring up this little window here. Always export as a movie, by the way. Don't bother using the poster. It almost never works. It's got some issues with it. Lighting sometimes doesn't work. Bloom looks weird. The dots from the SSAO sometimes don't work. So just follow this. This has always worked fine. I've been using this program for years. So export movie, export as image sequence. Follow this exact. Image sequence, format, PNG is fine. This doesn't matter, don't worry about that. And resolution is fine for 720p. If you want to render in 1080p, there's a launch option you can add. You can just quickly Google it. I think it's just like SM resolution 1080. But 720 will work fine for most of the stuff you'll need. Um, duration, we'll change this to custom. And we'll change the bit that says seconds to frames. So you see this? Follow this exact. We want to get frame 4, as it says in the top left. If the 4 isn't there or whatever frame you picked. This could be frame 400, if that's the one you liked. Keep clicking on that, and it will change it. Obviously, I'm in a window, so I can't change it, but we want to use frame 4. So in the left, we'll put 4, and in the right, we'll put 5. And this will just render one frame as a movie, and it'll be this one. If I, for some reason, wanted to render multiple frames, I could do 4 to 10, and then it would render frame 4, frame 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Not the final frame. Okay, but I only want to render one frame, so frame 4 to 5 to render this one. And then, if you want, mess around with the options again. Make sure that depth of field is set to either 512 or 1024. 512 will work fine for what we need. Disable motion blur. It's really hard to get it working. If you get it working, amazing. But if it's your early posters or you're having issues with stuff looking a bit dodgy, disable that. We do want anti-aliasing, ambient occlusion, don't mess with... All of this stuff, don't worry about. Literally just make sure the depth of field is set. And then we'll just want to render it. Export movie. Bang. Yes, that was done. So much faster than poster, and it looks better, I think. So once it's rendered, you can actually find exactly where it was by going to Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Source Filmmaker, Game, User Mod, Elements, Sessions. This shows every single render you make if you do it in this fashion. So if I scroll down, you'll actually see some, like, thumbnails and stuff that I've made, you see? A little bit of green screening there, a little bit of... Thumbnail tutorials and stuff. Cool stuff like this. Anyway, go all the way up to the top. This is our scout. We can edit this however we like. So to preview it, if you're using Windows, you know, just right-click preview, open it inside the Windows viewer, and we can have a look. And it looks pretty decent, I'd say. I'd almost certainly want to post-process this. I never put any poster up just as stock. Here it is inside Photoshop. One thing I always do is image adjustments curves and just set the darks to be darker and the lights to be lighter. Always makes it look nicer. Screw around this for as long as you like. If you can't quite get the look that you're looking for though, you can press cancel and go to brightness slash contrast and just screw around with the contrast setting. I quite like having higher contrast images. I think they look a lot nicer. So I'm gonna set it to be something like this. We don't want it to lose all of its detail. If you keep just setting it to contrast and going back over, it will start looking really, really stupid. So just 
We want the stuff not to look grey in the background, so... Something like that will do us for today, I think. Uh, I wouldn't mess around with the brightness. It always looks really, really stupid with anything but zero. So, set the, uh, the, dark, the shadows up a little bit. Again, we can go into curves if we want. Make the darks a little bit darker or the brights a little bit brighter. Again, something you can really mess around with for a really long time and I'm not really going to bother with, but just learn in your own time. See what works for you. The other thing I'm going to do is make it so that the shadows and everything are a slightly different colour. So we're going to go on to colour balance here, under adjustments. And we're going to shadows and we're going to make them a tiny bit blue and a tiny bit cyan. And I think this looks a lot nicer. It's a lot... It makes stuff seem to look a lot more natural if you set the shadows to look a bit more cyan. If I set this to whack, full whack, that looks pretty good. It's like something taken on Instagram, really. That's what they tend to do, I think, in Instagram anyway. But we're just going to want a nice little slightly cyan-y background. And we can also go into highlights and make them a bit orange. Just a little bit. This is a typical photoshopping technique. Very, very basic thing to do is to make the shadows cool and blue and the highlights warm and orange. Again, mess around with this for as long as you like. You could screw around with this for so long, but I'm just going to make him slightly, slightly, slightly nice warmer in the in the foreground. Mid-tones is just everything other than the shadows and the highlights. So we could set that to completely cyan, and that actually looks pretty solid. I quite you, Again, you can spend so long screwing around with this. I, I want to. Every bone in my body is telling me to screw around with all these settings, but again, you know, this is what I ended up doing after screwing around with it just now. Shadows cyan and blue, highlights, a slightly warmer orange, and mid-tones a little bit more cyan. And in Photoshop, you can just press Control z to flick between how things used to look and how things look now. I always think making the shadows look blue look so much nicer in a poster, so there we go. And I'm not going to do anything more than that, because I can again spend so long working on this. I'm just going to save this as a PNG, Control shift s and save that just as tutorial post process, like that. So we can actually open them both up in the image browser like so and just flick between them Bef before post-processing and after. I always think that a little bit of post-processing goes a really long way. So just making the darks darker, the lights lighter, darks blue, lights orange. Rough estimate, but makes it look a lot nicer. I'm also going to quickly do it in GIMP, actually, not paint.net, and show you how you can do this similar effect, not as good, but a similar effect in a free program. So we're just going to drag that into GIMP like so. There we go. And we're just going to do a quick, the same thing quite quickly. Again, this program is free. It's not as good as Photoshop, but it's better than just having the everything set as default, the way that SFM likes to do it. So we're going to go to, I think it's, yeah, colors. And then we're going to go to curves. Oh god, the wind. Colors, curves, and then just set the shadows down and the highlights up a little bit. Again, a bit of a weaker program than Photoshop, but you can get a similar thing going. It doesn't look as good, and it takes a lot longer to mess around with, so if you can get a hold of Photoshop, please do it. <laughs> it's a very useful program, and it's quite fun to learn to do. There's a lot of stuff you can do in it. So I'm just going to do that for now. A basic little back and forth tells us that that looks a lot nicer already. And again, colours, colour balance, and let's go to our shadows, and make those a bit... Oh god, again, this program is not as good. So we can, I think, yeah, does that disable preserve luminosity? For some reason that exists. I don't know why. It's a bad idea. So just make it, it's not, again, as much you can do in Photoshop as this, but try and make it look as acceptable as you can. Slightly, slightly dark, cooler shadows, like so. Don't overdo it. And you have to press OK. You can't do them all at once. So colors, color balance again, highlights, and make it a little bit lighter. Just a little bit, because this program goes really over the top. Just a little bit more, like so. So, there's not really much more we can do than that in GIMP. We can mess around with these other tools, but they all basically <laughs> don't do a great deal. Like, increasing contrast looks atrocious. Uh, although that looks a little bit better, a little bit more contrast, but, you know, the program is free for a reason. It's not meant to be used for a lot of things, so... I'm just going to save it like that. Slightly more contrast and slightly cooler shadows and slightly warmer foreground. That's about, again, all we can do. You can actually notice that it's picked up the weird fire effects on the scattergun. I quite like it, so I always leave it on. But I think you can probably remove that by messing around in uh, SFM. But I personally think it looks cool, so I've always left it in because I'm a weird man. So we're just going to save that again. File. Export as. And we're going to export this as tutorial and GIMP post-process and export. You can't do saving as, you have to export it. Leave all of this as default, don't mess around with it too much and just, just, just let it do its thing and it'll export it. So we can look through the different renders that we've managed to create. The original render, 
the cheap free Photoshop alternative GIMP. You can also use Paint.net, but they're, GIMP and Paint.net are both equally... Uh, I don't want to say as good, but they both do the same thing. And then Photoshop, which is quite nice. And we, you know, again, we could fiddle around so much, so, so much you can do in post-processing. It's an entire degree that you can take at university in post-processing. So if you want to advice on that, I'll do small little videos in the future on certain little tricks that you can do. Alternatively, you can just Google for stuff if you want to know how specific things look, like how to add little smoke particles, or how to add little highlights and stuff, and how to custom add blur, etc. But for what we've done, for a fast little tutorial, I think that's actually not too shabby. The final output I'm going to go with is just going to be this. 720p, it's not 1080, so if you zoom in, it, you do see pixels. You can render in 4K, even, but for what this is used for, it's perfectly fine. YouTube thumbnails, I always use 720. I always blur it a tiny bit to get these pixels out, but ever so slightly. But it, it works perfectly fine. A lot of image programs, a lot of image sites, sorry, tend to crush everything anyway when you upload them to try and save file space, so don't go too overboard, and don't feel too depressed when the websites, like, crash everything. But, I think that'll do it for today. I hope I showed off most of the things I wanted to show off today. There'll be future shorter videos covering really specific pieces of information, like three-point lighting, painting, unusual effects, um, custom posing, anything you want specifically, just ask in the comments, and I'll try and get onto it. If you did appreciate it, do let me know. But I will end the video there. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.